Space Marine Heroes. I only went in to get some paint. How did this happen? Tis the season to do something a little bit different, so I thought I'd do a quick review of the Warhammer 40k Space Marine Heroes Single Miniature Blind Box Series 1. Yeah. And as no serious Warhammer YouTuber seems to want to touch it, I'm also going to do a how to play for the Space Marine Heroes battle game that accompanies this set. All of them come in random blind boxes, kind of like hero click singles. There are eight individual marines and a captain to collect. All of these miniatures were previously available exclusively in Japan in 2017, but with 12 different space marines to collect in the boxes and a captain that was available separately in stores. The four missing marines in this version and the sergeant have been shipped off to the Space Marine Adventures Labyrinth of the Necrons boxed game, which is currently only available from Barnes & Noble in the US and uh, Germany. For reasons? Anyway, I've got a full brick of 12 boxes. Some of them have different rarities than others and they've helpfully put the probabilities on the front. The captain miniature is a rare figure and at 1 in 36 and should be in every third box. The others share rarities, there's a couple of 1 in 12s, so they should all be in here, uh, and a few more common ones that are 1 in 6. For some reason, regular bolter guy on the end is 5 in 36, or what's that, 1 in 7? Which is a bit weird, but whatever. I'm going to crack this open and see what we get. They're all plastic kits, so you'll need to assemble them, but they're the easy to build push fit type, so you don't really need glue. They're shown as ultramarines on the box, but they don't come with transfers or any markings, so you can paint them whatever chapter you like. Okay, I'll save you guys the frustration of watching my pudgy hands struggle to open cardboard on camera. I'll be right back, and we'll take a look to see what I got. Aha! The wonders of editing. Bad news, I didn't get the captain. What was a dramatic two seconds for you was ten minutes of crushing disappointment for me. Well, not really, but it does mean that Ash from Guerrilla Miniature Games retains his title of Jammiest Unboxer on YouTube. I did get one of all of the other characters though. The duplicates I got were all unique and were the most common guys. The 3 at 1 in 6 and Caster who's 1 in 7. So probability was indeed not on our side, but it does prove the numbers on the box were accurate. When you open the box you get a single blue plastic sprue with the miniature on it. You get a booklet showing all the heroes, the legal babble, and the assembly instructions. You also get a collector card with the dude's face, a picture of the mini all painted up, and the secret symbols, which have baffled everyone else who's unboxed these so far. The original Japanese cards just had top trump style stats on them. These icons are brand new for this release, and are also used in Series 2, which has just recently launched in Japan. These are the symbols that are used in the battle game, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. I did some poking around while I was at it, and Byronid 40 k was speculating about whether, you probably can't see this, the serial numbers on the side of the boxes give a clue as to what's inside them, so that you can game the system and pick the ones you want, even though they're blind boxes. It's clearly some sort of production number, as the one on the box matches the numbers you see on the little clocks on the base of the mini that's inside. Both of my Tituses, I've labelled them so I can remember who's who, um, end in 257 as do both of my Gaians. They're both the 1 in 6 guys, so that makes some sense that they'd have the same number. Garrus, who's the other 1 in 6, ends in 260, and both copies of him have the same number. Here's where it gets interesting though. The Sergeant, uh, Sevastus, who's a 1 in 12 chance, has a number that ends in 261, which is the same number as both of my casters, who are 5 in 36 chance, so they do seem to have shuffled them around a bit. Remus and Vaniel, who are both 1 in 12, have numbers ending in 255, whereas Promethor is hanging out on his own with 256. I don't have the captain, but based on the rest, I'd expect him to share the same number as either Garrus or Promethor, who are the only minis not to share a co with anyone else in my box. Does this help you pick who's who? Mm, the numbers could just be specific to an individual batch or country, so it's probably not worth worrying about it. If you get a full box like me, you're guaranteed to get one of everything, and maybe the captain, but you're also not in a position to pick a mixed numbers. You get what you're given. But there you go, don't say I'm not thorough. Anyway, back to the review. Each mini is on one sprue with number parts. Uh, this is Titus. It comes with a 32mm base, and the legs just push into the holes. You can see there's very tiny joins between the sprue and pieces, 
so they're fairly easy to twist and push out, which Warhammer Duncan does in his assembly videos, which I'll put a link to downstairs. They've also been designed in very cunning ways to hide the mould lines and get the pose right, but some of these guys would be very difficult to convert or adjust if you want to do your own thing. Each one comes with two heads so you can mix things up. They all have a helmeted head or a bare head and all of them have different faces which is quite good. Uh, the backpacks are all, this one's Sevastus, the backpacks are all fairly different but they all have the same peg so you could always swap between characters if you wanted to. Uh, if you want to do any other modifications a couple of the marines look easier to cut at the hands than others so you could always try doing some weapon swaps. The great thing is because they have different heads and backpacks on my duplicates I could do one as the regular guy and then mix things up with the other one. It'd be quite tricky to alter the pose on a few of these models, but other ones look a lot simpler to change, so you could maybe do a bit of surgery. They've been done in such a way that you could paint them on the sprue, but you're going to be doing a lot of touch-up work, so it might be easier to pot them off and assemble the miniature first. Uh, all of the bases have the same sort of destroyed Imperium terrain on them, so whatever you do, your force is going to look consistent with the same type of base. The set has a good range of marines too. Uh, Remus is the heavy guy with the missile launcher who looks suspiciously like the one in the Devastator squad box. Hmm. Uh, there's grenade throwing guy, Julie's. Titus is clearly the slacker in the squad. He's just casually standing there loading his clip and he's tossed the other one on the floor at his feet. I can't see this endearing him to the Emperor very much. Some of the Scots are a lot more dynamic than others. They're slightly chunky 28mm heroic scale marines not the more modern <coughs> 32 mil <mill, coughs> Primaris Marines. So if you want those, I'd probably go with the easy to build Primaris Intercessors instead. Probably be slightly cheaper too. Anyway, that's my quick review. Uh, I think they're pretty good. They look fairly easy to paint. Maybe once I get through my shamefully large pile of unpainted fantasy minis, I'll give these guys a go and show you how I got on. The instructions are easy to follow, but you don't really need them. As I said before, they're the push fit minis, um, but I'd probably suggest adding a touch of glue at least to the feet on the base and maybe the head to hold it all in place. It's a bit weird that on none of this they mention any of the games they make at all, or even the starter sets or other kits for 40k or kill team. I'd have expected a bit more advertising to show off their other stuff. Right, ready? Time to solve the mystery of the secret symbols which have confused all of the Warhammer YouTubers. These are the rules which you can get from the SpaceMarineHeroes.com microsite. This is where it starts getting weird. I don't think GW wants you to play this game. First, it's not mentioned anywhere on the boxes or in the instructions. And then, if you go on the site for the English instructions, you'll only get these three pages of rules. Uh, the board, which it tells you to download separately, isn't actually on there. The link above is actually the basic rules for 40k that came in the Dark Imperium box. Well, I wasn't going to let something like that defeat me. So, I went back on the Space Marine Heroes website, and then back to the top, clicked on the little flag and changed the site from the UK to Japan. Here we are, we can have a little sneaky peek at the new release in Japan for Series 2. It's six Terminators painted up like Blood Angels, with a seventh Ancient Standard Bearer available in a paint set that goes with it. So that's Terminators to go along with this set of Tactical Marines. It'd be interesting to see if Series 3 will be Scouts, or if they go for Primaris next. Anyhow, scroll down to the bottom, all the way down, past the basic 40k rules, and download the Japanese version of the rules for the battle game. Uh, this version has rules for the Terminators, and more importantly, the last page has the board. So, print two copies of this last page. Uh, then go back, print the English instructions, and you're ready to go. Aha! Uh, except you're not ready to go, because you also need six six-sided dice. Okay, fine, I'm a gamer, I'm a gamer, I've got dice, dealt with that. What else do I need? Oh, you need ten Space Marine Heroes. Ten. This is a blind box booster set of single models, but the game that goes with it needs ten Marines. Mm -hmm. We're going to battle on regardless with our how to play. At its core, this is an abstract game for two players with five Marines per side. Each Marine needs a card which shows their special abilities. The up arrow symbol you may already recognise as the symbol for tactical marines. All marines with the tactical icon can use the power armour actions. The next three symbols show the equipment action specific to a particular character. In this case, Brother Guyan here has a bolter, a six on a die, and a target with a three on it. 
Uh, some of the more common marines, the 1 in 6s, do share the same equipment action, whereas the rarer minis tend to have more powerful abilities. Ok, let's get set up. Step 1. Take both halves of the board and put them together, with the numbers at each end. One's your half, the other is your opponent's. Home and away as it were. As I've not assembled my marines yet, it's going to be Her Majesty's Silver Shillings versus the Imperium of uh, Copper Pennies. Step 2. Decide who goes first. The first player then picks a marine. Then the other player picks a marine, and you keep going until you both have five. Put each mini on one of the numbered starting squares on your side, and take the cards to match, and put them somewhere you can see them. I'm just going to lay mine out in order for speed. So you've decided who goes first, and alternated choosing marines. That's all of the setup done. Now you're ready to start. There are two phases. Roll the dice and do actions. The first player takes all six dice and rolls them to see what they get. Certain results will let you do certain actions in the next phase. There are four different types of result you're looking for. See if you have any sixes. I have one six, so I can put it aside. See if you have any double sixes and put them aside. Uh, I don't. See if you have three of a kind. I've got two fives, but not three, so nope. But if you did, put them aside. The last one to look for is a straight of at least three dice in order, but you could have four or more dice. I have a two, a three, uh, a four and a five, so we've got a straight. Uh, sixes can't be part of a straight. I then put this straight aside with the others, and that just leaves us with a five, which I can't do anything with. If you only have one valid result, you must put it aside. If you got more than one result, like me, you must take at least one of them, but you don't have to keep everything. If you didn't get any scoring rolls at all, your turn ends, and it's your opponent's go. If you have any leftover dice, you can stick and keep any scoring rolls you put aside, or you can push your luck and roll all of your remaining dice. If you fail to get a result, you go bust. You lose all of the action dice, including the ones you put aside, and it's your opponent's turn. If you did get another result on your second roll, you can put it aside. If you want, you can keep rolling any leftover dice you have until you choose to stop or go bust. If you manage to get results on all six dice, you go all out and get to take a second full turn after this one. So there's a massive risk reward part of this game. Ok, I decided to stick with these rolls. Now we move on to the second phase. Actions. You spend your results to perform actions. The actions you can do depend on the results you got. You could do a battle action. All heroes with the tactical symbol on their card can take these. Uh, and there's a battle action for each die result. Or you can use one of the special equipment actions that each of your marines have. Each ability uses a different result and it's marked on the card. Let's go over the battle actions first. If you have a 6, you can spend it to move any one of your marines forward one space in their lane. If an enemy marine in your lane is blocking that space, as long as neither marine is in their starting space, you can attack them instead. If you do that, they must move back one space. You can't occupy the same space as another marine, or move through them, or into a different lane, and no marine can ever be moved back further than their starting square. You can also spend a six to end the stunned condition on one of your marines. If you have two sixes, you can do the six action twice. If you have three of a kind, you can move up to three spaces with your hero that's in the same lane number as the value shown on the dice. So, if we had three dice with a one on them, Prometheus here could move three spaces forward. This is quite powerful, but you can only move, not attack. You'd also have to stop as soon as you get to a space that your opponent's mini's in. The last thing we can do is use a pass straight. Move your hero in each of the lanes shown on the dice, one space forward, if they can. Again, you can't use these to attack. So I got a 2, a 3, a 4 and a 5. So my heroes on 2 through to 5 get to advance one space each. That's it for the battle actions. Now let's look at the special actions. Brother Caster here has a bolt rifle, a single 6 and a ranged target with a 3 on it. The bolt rifle means shoot. You can shoot an opponent's hero in range, in this case 3, and it costs a single 6 to use. 
We got 1-6 with our roll, so instead of taking a battle action, we could have used Caster's shooting action. Caster has a range of 3, which is medium range. Why they didn't just put an M on it, I don't know. With a medium range, Caster can attack an enemy marine in his lane, or a marine that's in an, a lane adjacent to him. They then have to retreat back one space. However, you can't make an attack with a hero if they're still in their starting space, which we are. And you also can't attack an opponent's marine that is in its starting space either. Brother Gaian and Brother Titus share the, exactly the same ability as Caster, including the same range. So three of the most common guys do the same thing. Let's look at another. Brother Garrus here has a sort of U-turn symbol. This symbol means cut down. He can attack any enemy in range, but instead of moving them back one space, they have to retreat all the way back to their start square. This is only range 1, or short range, and so it can only affect the enemy that is in his lane. His ability needs three of a kind, or a straight, of at least three dice to work. Sergeant Sevastus has a similar ability. He forces you back to the start, but this time it's on a 6 and in melee. So his special only works if the opponent is directly adjacent to him and in the same lane. You only need one die to get this one off, but you need to be up close, so actually Garrus is probably better. Gaian is the same as Caster, uh, we don't Garrus, okay who do we have left? Ah, Remus. Remus is the missile launcher bro, and he's pretty strong. On a double six he gets to use his blast ability. Pick any enemy space marine in range and any marines that are adjacent and move them all back one space. Remus is bringing the heat and he has a range of five. Five is long range, which is the entire board. Uh, let's set up an example. So brother Remus here could attack the guy in the number three lane, uh, the Sarge, and these two adjacent marines would also be pushed back, would also be pushed back one square as well. Uh, Vaniel has a giant exclamation mark as a weapon. Again range 1, so it's his lane only, and it activates on a 6. The exclamation mark is a stun grenade. An enemy marine in range, so his lane, uh, is stunned. A stun marine can't move or attack. If Vaniel stuns the enemy marine, they can't go forward, or presumably backward either. So you can't even push them back after attacking. If you get a lucky 6 roll, rather than use it to do an action, you can spend it to remove the stun effect on one of your marines. You can always stack actions with other results. So if you had a 6, you could end the stun effect on one of your guys and then use another 6 to move them forward on the same turn. Promethor with the plasma gun also has the cut down U-turn ability that Garrus had. It works on a double 6 but has a range of 3 rather than the closer range of the others. So you can attack a marine in his lane or in, in an adjacent lane to him and force them all the way back to their start space. That's all of the special equipment actions of Series 1, except for the Captain, because I don't have him. But I suspect the Captain has the only ability left in the instructions. Uh, the ability left is Priority Vox. Whenever this hero is able to move, it can move normally, or you can nominate another Marine on your side to move instead. Very Captain-y, but a bit boring. That's it for the equipment actions. Once you've spent all of your dice on actions, your turn ends, and it's your opponent's go. How do you win? At the end of your turn, count the spaces all of your marines have moved from their starting space. That's your current score. Then check to see if at least three of your marines are in your opponent's half, and that you have the highest score. If you do, you win. If not, it's your opponent's turn. You can also play best of three for a slightly longer game. That's it, a full rundown of the Space Marines battle game. There are a few odd quirks. Uh, Remus is clearly OP in the current meta, and I fully expect a furious backlash once GW nerf him. If it's a close game, you have to keep adding up scores, and while it looks a bit like a strategy game, there's a lot of randomness from the dice. There's no Warhammer branding at all in these rules. There's not even a copyright notice, and the board's missing in the English version. The symbols are shown on the cards. But this game isn't advertised in the box or the instructions. Uh, the Terminators in Series 2 have card symbols for this game too, so they've clearly committed to it. But then, why make an abstract battle game that needs 10 marines to play, when there's only 9 unique sculpts in this set? 
This is a blind box booster set that you'd think would be aimed at young gamers getting into miniature wargaming by buying probably one or two boxes. So why didn't they put a simplified version of the Warhammer rules that needs, say, two a side to play? Uh, call it something like Target Practice or Training Room or Heroes Duel or something. Uh, something you can play as soon as you push them all together. They could have used this to show off the mechanics and advertise other models for 40k uh, that would encourage people to then move on to a full game. Okay, so it makes sense that they'd want you to buy more models and their main games, Kill Team and, and 40k. But then why bother to make this at all? What else can you do with these minis? Uh, well, you can build a squad of tactical marines as long as you have the sergeant and four others. Or, uh, you can take five more marines to give you a full tactical squad of nine marines and a sergeant. Uh, with Promethor and Remus as tactical gunners. This would certainly be valid in 40k, though if you use them in kill team, tactical marines just aren't as good as Primaris. Uh, you also can't use the captain. Uh, in kill team, currently, all of the space marine commanders in the expansion have to be Primaris. Uh, there's Primaris chaplain, uh, librarian, uh, lieutenant and captain. Captain Thesaurus is in the bulkier armour, so you could probably get away with it as a proxy, but this set are really meant to be regular tactical marines. It's interesting that when these were first released in 2017 in Japan, they didn't go straight for the new Primaris. GW is clearly switching over to the Primaris type, so perhaps this is one of the last times we'll see a release of regular marines. Right, that's your lot. Space Marine Heroes Series 1 Review and Rundown of the Battle Game. Will you pick these guys up? Is this a good move by GW with the single blind boxes? Or would you rather just be able to buy the entire squad and be done with it? As this is video number 10, I thought I'd mix things up with some space fantasy. Thanks for sticking with me so far. Lots more content on the way. As always, thanks for watching. Take a rummage in the description box for more content on this topic. And subscribe for more plus one wisdom. See you next time.